Hello everybody, just wanted to pop in with a quick video just to show you how to use my watercolour Euphoria paint palette with my A5 and A4 watercolour spiral bound pads. All these products are available on my website which is thatcraftplace.co.uk or they are also available on Create and Craft TV. So head to your favourite shopping spot and grab what you need um, but these are stunning beautiful amazing vibrant palettes of lusciousness is all i can say and we have not only regular plain colors in here starting from your white to your yellow to your skins to your ochres oranges reds pinks burgundies purples blues greens browns grays blacks all the way through to your electric blue, green, pink, gold and silver and your chameleon gold which mixes with all your other colours to create almost like interference, sparkly colours as well as just plain colours which is just a point of difference from many other colour palettes on the market. Please be aware these are super highly pigmented. You are not going to be disappointed with these, you are going to see a vibrancy of colour like you haven't seen for a long time with many watercolour palettes. Some are quite, I don't know, wishy-washy, but these are very, very highly pigmented. They are artist quality and you will really, really enjoy using these. So just a very, very quick technique. I've been asked to do this. I will say before we do anything else that I am not an expert. I have been using watercolours for literally a few months since mine arrived. Um, I've been learning from YouTube. I have learned wet on wet techniques, wet on dry techniques. I've been learning how to do some shading, but I can promise you that I am very, very, I don't know, I, I'm very novice is, is the word probably. I haven't really had an awful lot of time to practice, but I have picked up a few, a few things along the way. So let me just show you a very quick technique with the wet on wet. So actually I'm gonna turn my pad this way and my, my, my water is dirty and my water is dirty for a reason. I know you are not gonna be able to see when I put white, well, clear water on my palette um, to, to get the kind of shape that I'm trying to achieve. But if I leave use my dirty water, I'm gonna color these in red anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. So let's start by applying some water to our, to our pad. Now our pad are, pads are hot press, they are 270 GSM and they are smooth, so they're gonna give you a beautiful, beautiful finish. So I'm gonna try here, I'm gonna just add some color. Can you see this? I'm not putting it in any particular shape, although it would be quite nice to kind of get a, a flower shape, but I'm not gonna really worry too much. This is just to give you an idea of how you actually do the technique. So this is oh, plenty of water on here. Okay, let's make that look a bit rounder, like so. And then what you're gonna do is you are gonna take your color paint, and I've got a bright red here, and I'm gonna pop my color on my wet paint. So you can see now that is just gonna spread out beautifully. And at the top, actually, I'm going to be a bit cheeky. I'm going to bring in an orange and I'm going to pop orange across the top here because what will happen now, that red and orange will blend in to make some really pretty, pretty colours. Now, I'm not worried too much about um, how far it spreads because for me, this is just literally about showing you the technique rather than anything else. And while that's doing its thing, we can go back in if we want to have it a little bit darker at the bottom, for example, we can pop in a little bit more red down here to keep this side a little bit darker. Like so, very easily. And again, you can get a better shape than I've got. This is just me just practicing and giving you an idea. And then you can come in with some black, okay? And in here, let's pop some black Okay, don't panic, but this is just to show you how you can kind of like build up almost like your, 
your center to your flower. Now, obviously that's quite light at the moment, but you can go in with a little bit more, make it a little bit darker as you go. And you can see my poppy isn't the best shape in the world at all, but while it's still wet, I can bring in a little bit more of that red here to fill in some of those gaps while it does its thing. So for me, that's as simple as it gets for me and the, the colour will, will start, you can see it's moving already. So that's, again, I'm going to pop a little bit of a red up here so it kind of mixes in with all those other colours and you'll see now how cool that looks. Now obviously mine is a very strange shape but what I thought I could do, I don't know, let me see. I don't think I can change that very much to be fair, but what we could do is we could give it a little stem, but let's just put a little bit more black in the middle there. Hang on a sec, so it gives it a little bit more definition. And this is a very strange shape, Poppy, but it's just so you can see the, the actual process I go through. So there we go, that will be fine. And that would dry out beautifully anyway. It's a little bit pointy up here. I have a bit of a struggle with my shapes at the minute. I'm not, I'm still learning. But then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab our paint and we'll grab some green and we're gonna use the fine tip of the brush and we'll just come down from here. Actually, it's a little bit too dry as I can see there. Wipe a little bit off. We'll take a fine tip of our brush and we'll just paint just a little stem like so. Maybe a little bit longer, a little bit longer. And then you can start to use your, you know, I taught you in the previous video about the curves, the C's. You can do your C, and you do your C, and then you can colour that in. You can do your C, and a C, and colour that in. Now, one more C. I know these aren't poppy leaves, but this is me just practicing. And then we can kind of fill that in a little bit. So it gives it a little bit of a V. And then go back to a little bit of a darker colour now. Now I can fill that in beautifully, give it a little bit more shading. So that is as tough as it gets. Now, obviously, I'm not an expert as you can see, but I think that looks quite cute and where the black's all bleeding out, I absolutely love that. So what you can also do, what I quite like is to do um, a different shape. So we can do a, um, let's do a smaller one here and we'll do that. Maybe, I don't know, this kind of shape. Let's try and keep away from that pointy edge because I'm a I'm a bit of a nightmare for pointy edges. I don't know why, but I think I need to do a bit more practicing. Let me pop another one here. Because what would be quite nice, I thought, so pop in that red again, all on, on that edge. So this could be a, a head that's bending down. Okay. Wipe that off and let's bring in some of the orange again, because I quite like that orange. And see what happens, maybe a bit more red. Otherwise we end up with an orange poppy, with nothing wrong with an orange poppy, but there we are. So, and do it like so. I mean, that doesn't look very exciting, but it will do. It'll look quite cute when it's done. We'll do one more just over this side and we'll go that'll be an even smaller one a little bit of colour so you can you can see the colour there it's more for you than anything else really so you can do, use plenty my all got a bit of water on the edge there you don't want that to drip let's add the, the red around there I mean, this, this is as technical as I can possibly get with the with watercolour in at the moment. I'm not a. I do need plenty more practice, but this is this is what you asked me to show you. So fingers crossed, you can glean enough just from this. So 
so there you go and then what we'll do is we'll do the same thing with the green but this time obviously we're going to bring that's a petal hanging over so we'll bring that down like so to where that one is and then I've got a little bit of too much red in there because my my red and green has turned my paintbrush a little bit browny so we'll come back like so and we'll come down in a straight line as straight as I can get it I'm not very good at this but I will learn and then I'm going to bring in my C's and obviously that's a different colour C but it doesn't matter there's a bigger C and then we're going to go in that bit there like we did last time and actually that's gone a bit a bit brown so let's bring in some more red that's because it's still bleeding the colour's still bleeding but that's fine there we go and then we'll do the same on the other one I've had a little bit more water I think I know I'm leaning over but let's add a little bit more water to that one and then we're going to put a little bit of our bit like so so it kind of makes it look a little bit more real. I'm going to darken those up a little bit because you can. And then again, like so, you can do it however you want to. You can start playing with it. Make that a little bit of a darker green. We'll pop another one of our C's like so. Make that a little bit wider. And then I'm going to come in just here and I'm going to draw a line down like that, very fine. I'm barely touching the paper. Watch out for our, our brushes coming soon. So you can use your water brush you get in the set for this. I'm just going to put a, just a random, it was like a bubble there. And we'll do another one. Hang on, let's put our leaves in. I haven't learned how to do poppy leaves yet, as you can tell. But this is good enough for me, for what I need. And this is good enough just so you can learn. And then I'm going to pop. Do you know what? I'm going to come across here. I'm going to put a line down. And I'm going to come over. And actually that leaf is going to fall behind that one so don't worry for a minute so what I'm then going to do just just let me put my green leaves in as you can see I'm just playing but hopefully it will give you a little bit of an idea of what you can do and you'll probably do way better than me clean off my brush and then bring in that red again and because that's sat behind there we can now pop our little almost like a it's too too dry my brush a little poppy bud see what i mean behind there just like that and then we'll do one spread that out a little bit and then we've got one here so we just add a little bit more color here in there and then we'll get a little bit of water and we can soften that down there you go see again no expert but just to give you an idea of I mean I need to stretch my stems down a little bit probably because that looks a bit too so I'll come down about this far probably you can do yours way better than me and then if you you can add some more leaves if you need to that's a terrible leaf but there you go but you get the idea and there you go so that is the way i have started to learn i'm sure there are lots of techniques out there and lots of better ways of doing it than I've done it but as I'm learning I thought it would be worth showing you 
so I hope you enjoyed that I hope you you gleaned a little bit just remember once it's dry it's very difficult to add color so just try not to let it dry here you'll see if I try to add it won't shift and blend as well but then that might be what look you're looking for you might want to be able to do that have that a little bit darker in there like so but anyway i'm going to leave that where it is so thank you very much for watching it was just a quick one to share with you how i do it um i'm still learning so hopefully i'll be learning from some of you very soon once you've had a chance to play and enjoy using your watercolor euphoria palettes so thank you very much don't forget to join us on our crafting with lisa horton youtube channel and do not forget to hit the subscribe button and also that notification bell which means you won't miss out on any future videos thank you see you again soon